Okay, so hello to my ever-growing audience of one. Um, I just thought I've survived a hundred days of hardcore again. Um, so why not? This is not unplanned, spontaneous day 100 world tour. So this was my spawn. We're in Tiger Hills. Always like a bit of spruce, lots of nice dark wood to start off with. Can't even remember, it wasn't dense, densely wooded. Um, sorry, Gizmo's got something to say about that. Uh, first job was start a chicken farm. But that was here for sure. Which is why it's not particularly well planned. I'm building up a collection of eggs to the, to the, uh, the end when I destroy the wither the easy way and uh, get a load of wither roses. But that's another story. Uh, so I, I did my usual thing. Built up from chickens to get food and feathers so that once we get a bow we've got a good supply of arrows. So chicken farm is always top priority. Then I'm thinking where am I going to get some cows from? Well actually before cows we need to start a wheat farm. So I actually started, if you can see in that corner, uh, just next to some water, quick and easy. Started planting some seeds there so that we get wheat as soon as possible to be able to attract some cows to my death trap um, of a cow farm. Um, I fairly early realised I had quite a good spawn because um, I've got different types of trees, I've got dark oak not very far over there, got some birch, I like to have birch for my lighter coloured gates to make them nice and visible. Um, so my early days were just running backwards and forwards up here, clearing out all the trees, farming this corner, building up my chickens, and as soon as I, and also of course on the end of the first day of daylight start a mine so I dug, dug down as always I like to get near a 100 line I don't know whether you can see that up here that's near 100 line that makes life easy for me to work out where I am usually find some coal or iron or something in a natural location not too far down to start a little niche and of course that ends up being my base for the first 100 days <laughs> inevitably almost never build a house. I almost never build a house in the first hundred days. There was slight, something slightly unusual and different to this version, this particular spot. It had some... Uh, jungle biome, not far off. I picked up some bamboo very early in the game, which is unusual. It can be a real struggle to find bamboo to make scaffolding but of course I haven't used it. So day one it's always a bit of a mystery you know what you're gonna get when you go down towards the nether. Uh, this was a lucky one. See that nothing, nothing there actually the first, one of the first things I did was dig down there was some resources down there. And I came upon this uh, chasm um, ravine, underground ravine and immediately I could see the telltale spider web indication of a spider spoiler down there so I knew I was going to have at least one easy to make uh, XP farm um, and I do like spiders because they produce a load of string which you can uh, when you first get your first villager the Fletcher loves a bit of string so needless to say this didn't like evolve all that naturally, I realised I wanted to get down where that <laughs> spawn was, so I started digging down this way, and it was a real faff. I could hear a load of spiders. I couldn't work out where they were. Well, it turned out one of them. It's difficult to see. You can see <laughs> it's like looking around to try and find 
where they were. And then I stumbled upon a corridor. <sighs> Without going into any more detail, this was quite a complex process of sort of feeling out my way, neutralizing the spider spawners. There were three in close proximity. I still have a vague idea that I might do the third one. So this is what you end up with. Because they were so close, it's a bit of a fiddle to fit them together this way. Uh, so I like to, if I can, spider spawner with the enchanting setup. I kind of plan where it's going to be so that while I'm enchanting, they're building up spiders, which will create XP, which I'll need for enchanting. say it's god kit oh pretty much everything now that I wanted mending is the big one that you have to get your villagers for but before you're gonna go do the dragon you're gonna be wanting to get some half decent uh, equipment that involves getting diamonds which in my personal methodology is digging along the 50 lines nice and straight in a grid and at each each okay, I don't know if you can see that here that targeted block is 100, 150. So where there is a uh, crafting table in the floor, there it's going to be an intersection of 250 lights, 50, 100, 100, 100, etc. So I won't go into the long and boring story of how I ended up with a load of diamonds. We've all done it, but that was that. Um, that about does it for my underground section. Oh! It was a bit difficult to fit my potion set up. Normally I like to have my potion set up right next to my enchanting table. This is it. Always the same. Um, water bottles in there. Nice and simple. Click that button. That will drop some nether wart into the hopper. I don't automate you know, individual ingredients, I do automate that one up there, we'll drop in a bit of redstone dust. That's prepared for going to the outer islands. So there we go, that is my setup. I do occasionally get poison effect from being bitten by one of these spiders. I realise it's a bit noisy. I should have turned down... I turned down friendly creatures. I should have turned down hostile creatures just for the video, shouldn't I? Sorry about that. Now that it's too late. I'm learning. So that's my underground setup. Pretty much all there is to it, to be honest. I was lucky because uh, uh, multiple spider spawners in close proximity to the starting point. <sighs> so it takes me about, took me about 50 days to get I always have my grid of four wheat farms. Pigs came very late on. I just recently went and picked up some pigs because they're good for... Once I get to a certain point, it's always a decision whether to go and kill the dragon and then come back and start with villages or do villages. I, when I say do villages, I set up traps like this one. And when a zombie villager wanders by, which can be frustratingly uh, irregular, infrequent occurrence, but once one, once you get one, and uh, in this particular world my first one was a baby, baby zombie villager, and I trapped him spontaneously, I didn't have a trap prepared down here, and for quite a while, the whole process of setting up my cow grinder, which I'll just quickly go through now, uh, I could hear the little lighter grumbling away in his little trap down there. I was lucky because I because I bottomed out a, um, those mine shafts. I had a couple of name tags so I was able to name him. He didn't have to be carrying something which is the only other way that he's going to not despawn. 
The cow spawner, I've done a video on this, I think you know, but you know, it's my standard procedure to get a load of books, a well, load of leather to make books. This is something I do after I've, these were for cows to start with, I convert it into a sheep farm once I've got a butcher who loves giving me emeralds in exchange for mutton more than for some other things for some reason. It's good value mutton. Um, would be unfortunate to die whilst making my 100 days video. Uh, good, so a bit of this process generates XP, so it, I was slowly sort of getting to work on preparing the groundwork for spider spawners, but really I went to get a fortune 3 enchantment before I you know, even had that set up because you want you know, a good axe, a good pickaxe rather, to um, to do all that groundwork of emptying out a cavern around the spawner. That didn't make a lot of sense, but people who know about the spider spawner XP farms will know what I mean, you know, it's a lot of digging. So this setup actually creates enough XP once you repeat it, all nine grinders will get you up to 30, from about 27 to 30, fairly easily. So a combination of that and XP from uh, smelting iron, you know. In my experience, just the process of doing all the jobs that need doing produces enough XP to get up to around 30 pretty frequently so I end up with a sort of far from perfect far from god level set of diamond armor and tools obviously none of this building was here at that point for a long time this was the, the limit of my domain uh, obviously I'm gonna be setting up a, uh, a sugarcane farm early on in any game because that's an essential part of making paper to make books to make your enchanting to make books uh, cases to make your enchanting setup so that's the whole process of the first sort of 30 days or so it's just getting an enchanting setup works. and in the process of that you end up with a load of resources to make as much participating again uh, I do usually try to go off and get some bees, as those who know these are bees nests. Bees will make your farms grow more quickly. Obviously I should be harvesting this lot really, but uh, you get a bit lazy about that after a while. You've got other priorities. So once you get your first two villagers healed up, i.e. Uh, you have to sort of create a potion of... Of course, right, <laughs> before you can do that, you have to go to the nether. So the story of my nether... <laughs> is actually quite amusing. Um, I put, put my nether portal here. So once you think you've kind of got uh, like a, a decent diamond armor set up, the one thing that you really want to be able to do is make potions. You're not going to go to the, kill the dragon without slow falling potions. Uh, and also you can't heal a villager until you've got um, some blaze rods. So we go basically we go to the nether to get blaze rods which you can only find at another fortress. So here we go and I plumped myself down here. And this is what I got but in fact I was just on this with none of the grey bit around me. Suspended 70 blocks above a huge lava ocean. So big I've come out here without any fire protection which is unwise. So big you know I couldn't even hardly see the nearest landmass. So I bridged out across here to get to this nether waste side and nether waste is safer than some areas and I was lucky so I got a load of gold came up here and there was one actual whatever they're called piglin who would trade with me so I locked him in a hole <laughs> as you do. I did all my trading with him down here and he gave me four potions of fire resistance and once you've got some potions of fire resistance you can afford to 
they're looking for. But you got some insurance against something which did actually happen, i.e. falling in the lava lake. So that did happen and I was able to take it. It's only a three minute potion, but it was enough to... I can't remember where it was. I ended up in the lava. So then it's difficult to go looking for... Bearing in mind that grey ladder up there. You know, it, it, that wasn't there. That was fairly late. At, uh, that was post uh, the dragon fight at, um, addition. So it was difficult to go looking for... Do not want to fall in the, in the lava while doing my video. So you can see what I did. I, I uh, bridged out over there. I didn't want to go this way. Risky heading towards the water forest, the blue forest, because it's absolutely packed with those mofos, uh, endermen, who are my bane. So, long story short, a lot of pretty. Uh, nerve jangling bridging out across the void well not the void but across the lava wastes i finally managed to get hold of uh, i managed to locate infiltrate and uh, um return with uh, another fortress and return with the necessary blaze wards and nether wart to start a potion set up down where we looked and i always think once you've got that you kind of breathe a sigh because you know You've got all of the equipment you need. You've got the, like the setup that you need to seriously think about the dragon. I think I did that. That was around day 50. I was in that situation. So then it's preparations for the dragon fight. Got to uh, kill some phantoms, which we're not seeing any phantoms, fortunately, at night here. To get those funny little membrane things to make some potions of slow falling. Uh, sometimes I try and get back to the nether fortress with a, with a uh, potion of fire resistance and really like clear out, get a load of load of uh, blaze rods because you're going to need them for eyes of ender. And the other thing you need is, um, as some would say, a dozen. Personally, I like to have maybe 16 uh, ender pearls, which you get from killing endermen, um, which you combine with blaze rods and Blaze powder is, but blaze rods effectively are your remaining, you know, raw material um, to make your eyes vendor to to be able to open the portal to get to the dragon. So that's all relatively complex, but it's always the same. You know, you're always doing the same thing in this game. I am. <laughs> um, so once you've got your ender pearls eyes of ender you can throw them you throw them up in the air and they tell you which way the stronghold is and off you go stronghold was a mishmash big mess I'm not gonna take you over there but it was a real mess um because it spawned in the middle of a not a ravine but i guess yeah maybe it is a ravine an underground ravine but it makes the like the broken staircases and it was really i could not find the uh the chamber where the end portal is. And eventually, I was I stood on top of a seemed like a, a brick floor, hearing the bubbling of um, lava, and I suddenly realised, well, I haven't been there, so I broke through it. And I was standing on the ceiling of it the whole time. So, killing the dragon, a little bit fraught every time. It's quite stressful, but. In theory, you do everything according to the, the playbook. You should be okay. Um, and then you get back with your bundle of 70 odd XP. You use that to uh, finish off some work with your set of armor that you've been building up. And then it was time to think about the villagers, so uh, I set up this. So I started off. kind of here with an empty space over there thinking right what am I going to do so I decided it would be these two kind of barrack buildings on my first few uh, cured villagers and separate them off and then breed a couple of uncured uh, villagers so to speak natural normal villagers 
And then during the night, it's dead easy to just break the bed and force them to come over and find a bed where you want them. So it's easy to get your badges where you want them nowadays, I think. That would be a separate video. Um, Mr. Fletcher, I called him Mitochondrial Eve just with a name tag because it was, yeah, I needed something. Little in there because that was, he was the baby, baby zombie villager. There's another one who's got a name tag who I just sort of, third time lucky, yeah, so he was just like a bonus villager who happened to stumble into my web. And then again, you know, it's the process of getting mending, well, it's all you're interested in is mending, so Mr. Fletcher gives you a load of uh, emeralds in exchange for some sticks, which is quite nice of him, and specifically string, you know, look at that, eight string, he's going to give you, because you'll You've got more string than you know what to do with. Twice a day, he'll give you 16 emeralds and a bunch of XP for that. So suddenly you're like getting a load of XP, getting a load of emeralds. Now the first thing that they offered me was unbreaking for one. I couldn't say no. To have a bit of discipline, you can't just accept any old nice looking book from the first guy that comes along. Uh, mending. A little bit expensive, but again, you can't say no to that. You might spend another half an hour cl clicking and re-rolling and breaking this thing and again that's material for another video about how that works but happy to see mending you know that's always a bit of a pro bit of a moment in any world what else did i go for in the end yeah impaling just because i'm gonna need it eventually that's something you get on a, a trident later in the game but it didn't really matter once you got mending silk touch that was a decision because I finally wanted to be able to have Silk Touch in order to be able to farm melons! Melons and pumpkins are just the best thing to trade because uh, that's why I've actually gone with two farmers because my first farmer didn't want to buy pumpkins off me. You know, what's he thinking? What kind of businessman is this? But he wants both. He's having my melons and he's having my pumpkins and he's having them frequently and at a knockdown price. The other thing here is books to the librarians, that's a great trade, you know, because you've got your setup to make loads of books and ink, you know, ink, one ink, one emerald, that's a great trade. So these guys provide a lot of XP at this point, you know, if you do a full round of trading. Uh, I've been a bit, a bit negative there having two farmers, but the next thing will be a um, uh, whatever the map guy is, cartographer, and uh, he'll buy glass, which the librarians sell, effectively transforming, you know, two emeralds into three every time, and it's quite good. Creates XP for you and generates emeralds. I'm not obsessed with emeralds for their own sake because they're pretty. Um, the next aim, the next objective, is to get three stacks of blocks of emeralds. That means the top line has to go up to 64 all the way to the end, and then you transform all mine into blocks. And you've got one stack of blocks of emeralds. And you just keep on trading until you get another one. The purpose being to make a uh, four-tier um, pyramid on top of which you will put your beacon. When you get to, when you get back from the the wither fight, you'll have a uh, a beacon uh, which will power the um, s s total annihilation of a large sort of 50 by 50 square down at the bottom to get all the resources available. Just makes it really easy to mine resources. So there we go. I think that's about it. Uh, The pumpkin and uh, melon farm is really like the most recent objective and target that we've achieved. It's such a step by step, step process this game, you know, succeeding at hardcore is just like breed. Oh, I haven't done this over there, right? So, breed the reason that this is set up this way is so when they're asleep, I wake one of them up, steal his bed, and then he. <laughs> He automatically wanders down here and goes, oh, okay, there's a bed down here, sure, I'll go in there. That looks like a nice place to sleep. So I lock him in, up, open the trap doors, so 
open these trapdoors, invite a friendly zombie to come in. I don't like having golems wandering around around here because they, they kill my zombies that I need because they will automatically drop through there, kill the villager, or rather turn him into a zombie, and then I can use a uh, potion of weakness and a golden apple to cure him. And the reason for all of that kerfuffle is because that is what results in these kind of prizes when emerald for a good book, etc. Uh, and the next thing that I'm going to be doing is basically building that up. I'm pretty much ready now to go and killing the withers not really a big deal. What I need is and one more nether skull, uh, wither skull. So in order to summon the wither, you need these little guys, little, little cubes, cube head of a wither skeleton. Um, a bit of a pain to get hold of. I have, at different times, made farms to make it easier but in actual fact the easiest thing is just to go down there plenty of fire resistant potions just wander around keep killing them till you get your your skills really you get quite a bit of xp for that and usually some loads of blaze rods so a lot of times you know there's a lot made of all the automated farms and clever ways to uh, work the system work the game to your advantage but a lot of times you just play the game and you get what you need so there we go day 100 kept this just under half an hour i'm sure it's just a rambling mishmash of nonsense but uh, it's kind of fun to keep a record there we go say goodbye to my golem i'll see you in day 200